Welcome to Brave with Lisa YouTube channel. My name is Lisa Bruton and my goal is to inspire you to live bravely in that unique rhythm of grace that God has designed just for you. On this channel, we are going to be hearing from amazing people from all different walks of life who are bravely walking in that unique rhythm of grace and calling that God has designed just for them. I know that as we hear their stories, we are going to learn a lot. We're going to find keys that are going to help us to also walk bravely in that unique rhythm of grace and that unique calling that God has just for you and for me. I'm so glad right. you're here. Well, hi, Bob. Welcome. It's so great to have you on this podcast with me. I just feel so honored to have you here. Oh, this is great. I get the benefit. I don't know if everybody gets to see you uh, on the podcast, but I do. And so thanks for having me. It's great to see your smiling face. <laughs> I um, So I've gotten to know you a little bit over the last six months, and I have gleaned so much wisdom from you. So I'm really excited to kind of just get under the layer and find out a bit more about Bob. But before we do, do you want to tell me just a little bit what's going on in your world right now? Oh, always just so many different things. We're, uh, we uh, love building schools. So that's uh, kind of love does. So we're just scouting one in the Dominican Republic today. Wow. Um, the Afghanistan, depending on when this airs, uh, is on the edge of falling. And so we've got uh, friends and uh, schools in Afghanistan. So we're spending a lot of time there. And one of our uh, dear friends that's part of all this is got a lot of family members there he's navigating mm -hmm. so then uh, we've got a camp called the oaks that's uh, kind of a retreat center and we planted our last grapevine and oh. uh, that is like now about three or four feet tall so we're excited about that and we have people one group's leaving and the next one's coming and so I'm the guy that brings the like detergent that they forgot so <laughs> I'm like the guy doing important stuff like that um and then I've just turned in a book, uh, mm -hmm. the next one. And um, so there's just like any no shortage of things going on. Got a, I'm a grandpa a second time over here in a couple of weeks. So that's the news flash for me. So exciting. I love all that. I think the thing that, I mean, what I'm really captivated by you, Bob, and what I really enjoy learning about um is I see that you have all these amazing roles. So first and foremost, you know, your hus you're a husband to your sweet Maria, you're a dad, you're a grandfather. And like you said, that's growing. And you've just mentioned some of the schools, you know, that love does and also the oaks. So I just see that you have fingers in many pies and many hats. But what I love is how you do that lightly with joy not frivolously you know not um in a fluffy way but in a really intentional beautiful way that tells me you do things in your own rhythm your own unique rhythm you know that that unforced rhythm of grace yeah and so what us. i want to learn from you is how do you do that what are some key things that help you stay in that unique rhythm that is for bob goff yeah, I think for all of us, we're wired so wonderfully different. Uh, so seven and a half billion of us, and we're all like mm -hmm. trying to figure out life and relationships and meaning and purpose and all that for people trying to figure out their faith. What do they believe and why do they believe it? Um, and so in the midst of that, uh, to just not take everything so seriously yeah. um, that sometimes you can just get so intense. Now, I, I get it. I'm like a trial lawyer. I win arguments for a living, but I'm not trying to argue with everybody these days about things. There's some important issues. We just got on the other side of a, a cataclysmic uh, presidency. <laughs> I'm not a big political guy, but it just created yeah. all kinds of havoc for all of our friends down under and everywhere else uh, because we were couldn't get our stuff together so <laughs> so what i want to do is be like super humble and i love this saying there's two types of people humble people and people who are about to be humble people <laughs> I like that. so why not beat life to the punch and just get humble now and uh and so underneath the veneer of just joy and happiness and it's not fake it's just like mm -hmm. i'm pretty upbeat guy, but there's like a mile of strategy. Yeah. Like, so I know why I'm doing what I'm doing. 
um, if you were in this room that I'm in, uh, there's uh, 33 things on my wall that I'm up to right now. And those are the 33 things I'm doing. I look at it all the time and I know these are the things and maybe there'll be 34 or 32, but like these are the things that I'm spending all of my energy on. And then the other stuff, uh, you know, you just get done like uh, important stuff, like recycling some cardboard. You know, and like, really, you're just like, yeah, hey, a couple minutes and we were going to jump on the line. I thought, why don't I throw it in the pickup truck and get some of that cardboard? Like just, it'd be good for the earth. Yeah. Um, so we're all trying to figure out uh, among the, all the things that are pulling and vying for our attention, mm -hmm. what will we spend our, our time on and give our energy to? And for those where faith is an important thing, there's a great verse in Hebrews 12. It says that we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses um like let's run with endurance this race that's before us keeping our eyes fixed on jesus the yeah. author and creator of our faith and so what i want to do is kind of keep my eyes fixed on the important stuff and not be distracted by all the other stuff and then things will come up literally three minutes before you called i got a call from san quentin and uh, so we've got uh, some prisoners there. There's about 150 of them. And uh, so they were just checking in, see like how, how I'm doing. <laughs> so great, I love yeah, it. So it just like, and then we're gonna go up there and see them. They're opening up the jail again on August or July 12th. And so I wanna be the first guy in through the door. I was, uh, I was with a friend a uh, time or two ago that I was there and he realized when we were getting in through the prison doors that he'd forgotten his identification. And so he turned around and he started running back to the car and you cannot run away from <laughs> federal penitentiary you can run towards it if you want but you cannot run away from it and these guards are up in the guard shack with like rifles and they're like talking to him on the bullhorn like stop and all that so it kind of made me because i'm prone to thinking in stories it's like what are you running towards what are you running away from and so for part of the strategy is to maybe be willing to ask some of those questions of myself in addition to all the activity um, are we doing activities because we're trying to run away from responsibility? Yeah. Are we doing activities because we're actually insecure about the reality? And so mm -hmm. we fill ourselves with distractions and just say, well, I don't have to deal with that because I've just made myself so busy over here. And um, <laughs> it doesn't come from a bad place, but it's definitely when you ask the question, like, how do you do all the things that you do? I'd say, I'm uh, number one, I'm learning. Uh, but yeah. number two, the thing I'm learning is to know that a lot of activity doesn't mean a lot of progress. Sometimes a lot of activity just means a lot of activity. Yeah. That's it. So how often would you say, Bob, that you just stop and take stock of where you're at? Oh, definitely once a week, because oh, I take um, a ride on a horse once a week. And that's it. I just like, it's very like, inefficient way to get somewhere. Um, and so I get the saddle out and I saddle up the horse. I give the horse a carrot. I clean up whatever carrots came out the other end. I, like I go for a little ride. Then I see an owl up in a barn and I come back. Then I wash the horse. Then I give it another carrot. Then I give... There's something really beautiful about when you talked about these rhythms of grace, they have these rhythms in your life of rest and work. And so I just decided once a week, I'm just going to get incredibly inefficient, slow it way down and just get on this horse and clip clop around a little bit, terrorize a couple cows. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm more scared than the cows are, but um, learning how to gallop, like when you oh. are just uh, walking, uh, that's easy enough. But then when it starts trotting, uh, you actually are bouncing in your saddle pretty good. It'll kick your butt. <laughs> Um, and then once you move from a trot to a gallop, mm. uh, then it kind of smooths out a little bit. And so it's hard for all of us to move from like uh, the slow walk to a trot and then from a trot to a gallop. And I think a lot of people right now uh, on the uh, tail end of so much that everybody's gone through, they've really got their butt kicked. Yeah, <laughs> they've, been, they've been trotting. And I yeah. want to figure out how to either slow it down to a walk or speed it up to a gallop, but not just be in between, which is a trot. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I suppose in the, you know, the changes of rhythm that, I mean, we all have different changes in our lives then, which means we have to find that new rhythm, I guess. And sometimes it's crunchy for a little bit as we find it, which I guess is what you're talking about, the bumping as you're, you're trotting. Yeah. Or using another metaphor, if you learned how to drive a clutch, you know, you put in the clutch and sometimes the gears still grind a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like you just are trying to find that next gear in your life and it's grinding a little bit. And so what do you do? Do you just bail out and take the bus? Or do you just say like, no, I'm going to try to find another way that I can change the gears a little less grinding uh, and maybe a little less attention on just ourselves instead yeah. of saying like, how's your life working for you? A better question might be like, uh, Lisa, how is your life working for all the people around you? Yeah. Right. Your kids, your husband, you know, sweet Maria, if my life isn't working for them, mm -hmm. it isn't working for me. And some people uh, haven't had uh, the presence of mind to kind of assess how's it my life working for everybody and maybe worth asking. Yeah, that is so wise. And that's something that I found as well is that Matt might be in a different rhythm and then my girls are in a different rhythm. And so it's just working out, okay, well, maybe Matt right now, it's time to like focus on your rhythm and I'll, I'll work in with you for a little bit. And then, you know, so it's almost a family rhythm as well, isn't it? Yeah. And these are things that we negotiate. They're things that we're uh, aware of. So it's, it becomes an awareness of the, like when you're tired and then everybody will just chill out a little bit because yeah. they'll just, but they aren't saying, well, so I'm going to let you rest now, but you have to be then really interject later to make up for the time. Like that would be super lame if we're always in a negotiation and difficult relationships are marked by massive negotiations. Everything's a negotiation. Yeah. And so if you ever had, uh, whether it's a guy or a gal and you felt like, you're constantly negotiating or bad employee. <laughs> Those will be brief, bad negotiations. So uh, to just say, I just, I'm not negotiating. Don't confuse. This was a negotiation. This is me saying, these are kind of how we're going to do mm. this. And if this isn't for you and I could understand it, uh, then this may not be the place for you. And yeah. uh, internally, if uh, you're listening and you've, your job just isn't for you anymore, then quit. Like just say, I'm, I'm out. I'm going to go do some, you're around the sun, maybe, you know, whatever, 80 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and like, you know, I wouldn't waste one or two in a bad job. I'd go yeah, find a better job. Yeah. One that's more fitting or learn how to fly fish or, you know, find something. I, I understand you have a reef around there somewhere. Um, so go investigate it. Just don't read about it to say like, let's go see this thing. See, yeah. see if it's in good shape or not. And so what would you say would be some, you know, so I can imagine there's quite a few people listening that are like, oh, I'm in that place. You know, I'm really not happy in my jobs. There's something that I can identify isn't right. It's not where I'm meant to be. How do they take that leap from, um, where they are in, in taking that, that big step to quit or change their lives in some way. Yeah. So first it's an awareness, uh, that, uh, this isn't working. <laughs> this is not working for me. And that can be involved some grieving in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think just go like, wow, this just isn't what I thought it was going to be. Um, and then, uh, to say, I'm not just going to like capitulate, what I'm going to do is really fight for this thing to be better. And so if it's a relationship or in, in a work setting to say, if this isn't the job that matches who you've turned into, then either you can change or the job can change. And I'm voting for the job to change. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think we need to just bring it down a notch, bring down your expectation. And I get what Paul said, I can be content in all things. Uh, but uh, like Jesus said, let's go live a big life. Mm -hmm. uh, they uh, brought glory and honor to you by finishing the work you gave me to do. That's Jesus talking to his dad in John 17. So like, why don't we just finish our work? And our work is really varied uh, just because you're capable. Like I'm capable of being a pretty good trial lawyer, but that mm -hmm. doesn't mean I'm called to be a trial lawyer. I've done it for a while, <laughs> 32 years, a while. And then I just said like, nah, I'm going to go build some schools. 
and it and again it wasn't just like flippant but yeah. um there wasn't like ringing a lot of ringing of hands i just said i'm gonna go do this next thing see how it goes um and so that curiosity would be something that whether wherever anybody is on a faith spectrum uh to just be curious be curious about people i'm curious about you uh, i'm curious about how life works for you what doesn't work for you and when you meet your neighbor, the person across the street, the person that bags your groceries, the person that picks the lettuce, just be curious about, wow, how does life fit together for you? And taking that kind of genuine interest, uh, you don't need a Bible verse for everything, but it's Philippians 2.20 and it's Paul talking about Timothy. He says, Timothy's a guy who takes a genuine interest mm -hmm. in the people around him. So I want to be that guy. I just want to be curious about what's going on. I got a, uh, a horse. This horse I ride around is very docile, but somebody gave me a racehorse for a dollar. Uh, and I was like, <laughs> really? Like I get a whole racehorse for a dollar? I don't know what that is per pound, but it weighs 1,500 pounds. So pretty good, but I'm not supposed to eat it. I wanted to race it, but they said, oh, you can't because it hurt, it got injured early on, it'll never race. And then I went full sea biscuit on it. I got a vet, I got all these people to work on it. And I would just sign the papers today. We're sending it to this big race, it's called Santa Anita. And I'm just like, I'm just so curious about how this will turn out. So I'm, I don't, I know I'm just gonna wear a big hat. Um, I've never been to a horse race, but what a great time to go when one of your horses is in the race. <laughs> My one dollar horse. <laughs> I love it, and I I can see you have a wonder of everything. I love how when things happen, like you said, you you'll learn about something, and all of a sudden, it's telling you a story, and you're learning from it. And I think yes. that curiosity and that teachability is just priceless. Yeah, maybe get a little bit more curious about the person that you said I do to mm -hmm. a while ago instead of just like settling in and being great roommates to say like well let's lose the roommate thing and just really be interested again you know like the, let's figure out what the next adventure might be and what might happen next and do some things that seem a little crazy or outlandish to say like i don't know how this is going to turn out but it's like instead of watching like reality tv why don't we like live into the reality of our lives and just be thoroughly entertained by that um, and just say like, I don't know what's going to happen next, uh, but I really want our lives to be page turners. And the crazy thing, it doesn't need to be these big things. And then I climbed Everest and then I did this. And then this, they're the small, really important things. Uh, those acts of kindness that are anything but spontaneous. They're actually, they look spontaneous, but they're actually the evolution of a lot of thought that went into it and an awareness that somebody needs something that only you could give them uh, that would really mean a lot coming from you. Yeah, yeah, and that takes being present too, I suppose. Yeah, just awareness, head on a swivel. Yeah. What's going on around me? What's going on inside me? Uh, what's going on inside other people? Is somebody saying something without saying anything mm -hmm. by what they're doing? Like yeah. they're doing something that's a little weird. Uh, maybe you have in-laws. <laughs> That's where all those in-law jokes came from because they're just <laughs> weird. Uh, and then you could say, well, when the circus pulls into town, I'm not going under that big top. I'm just not going to. Just because just crazy arrived on my doorstep doesn't mean I need to participate. And so I'm not saying check out. I'm just saying like, I would just tap the brakes on that to say, I'm yeah. just not going with crazy right now. Um, and so you can do it in a really nice, upbeat way. Mm. You need to call people crazy. You just recognize them that they are, they're nuts. And so they're <laughs> going to bring all this drama into your life. And so I want you to, Proverbs 4.23 talks about guarding your heart. So just when all the crazy happens, guard your heart a little bit. Yeah. Because that could be a big distraction, right, Bob? Totally. Yeah. Because all this happens, then you forget everything. That's why the casserole catches on fire because you're so <laughs> distracted by all the crazy that's going on in your living room that you forget what was going on uh, in the next room. And so being mindful, uh, bearing up with each other, like when that happens and somebody's had a really difficult time to just yeah. say like, wow, you don't need to say, I know how you feel because we rarely do, mm. but we could say, I can imagine how you might feel. Um, but there's just something really 
humble about that. Like, wow, that must really stink. Is that right? Is that what you're, you're feeling like this feels unfair? Mm. Uh, we go like, oh, that's exactly how I feel. Then just rest it. Like you don't have to fix it. Just say like, yeah. wow, like uh, take them out for an ice cream cone. Mm. Like just sometimes these acts of kindness and it's that kind of presence to your point that would make you do something because you know that's just what they need right then. I love that. That's so true. Bob, you were saying that you've just finished writing a book. I did. Yeah. Is is that the one about distractions? That's it. Oh. Yeah. So how can we just like reclaim, like instead of if there's an emotion that I think we feel oftentimes is distraction. Mm. Uh, that it, distraction from your finances. And I get it. Like we've all been there. Uh, distractions because relationships got a little weird. And like, I totally, we've been there too. Uh, <laughs> distractions uh, because you're feeling either isolated or lonely or whatever. And then you get distracted by something a little shinier or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so just recognize like, this is what's going on. Because yeah. if we just try to medicate it by like talking about something else or, uh, or, or, you know, whatever it is, uh, just some way of dealing with that without dealing with it. Like we're just distracting ourselves more. Yeah. So then the thing that you use to medicate the distraction, you're trying not to be distracted. <laughs> now you're distracted by that too. So I'm just saying, could we just like slow it down a little bit and then just kind of step off the wheel yeah. and uh, remember who you are and then lift your eyes and say, who do I want to become? Mm. And uh, very rarely have I heard somebody is a career objective to say, I, I want to grow up and become distracted. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard people say they want to be the president until recently. Uh, but, <laughs> but, they, <laughs> but to say, uh, most people don't aim for that, but that's mm -hmm. where most people hit. They yeah. end up distracted. It's just like they're right to their last days. And I just go, I wonder if we could rewire that thing. It's kind of like hot wiring a car. Have you ever done that? No. Yeah. It would not be good for my car if I tried to do that. <laughs> yeah, but it's not actually that hard. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's illegal, but it's it's okay. awesome. So <laughs> so what but what I want to do is to say, could we rewire our minds and our hearts uh, to think about less distraction? The only way that you can be less distracted is find something that is uh, grabs your attention more and mm -hmm. will hold your attention. And that's where faith comes in. It's not for everybody, but it's certainly for me. Mm. I know it is for you to say, I want to replace whatever shiny thing that is with something that's going to actually outlast that. Um, so how can you tell when you're being distracted? Yeah, the uh, first telltale sign is you'll say, what? <laughs> <laughs> somebody will be talking to you and go like, what? <laughs> so you're not fully present in the conversations. Yeah, Another telltale sign is you'll just find yourself like uh, often daydreaming all the time. And I'm a, like a really fun, creative thinker, uh, but I don't find myself daydreaming. I'm usually planning. Planning yeah. is like active and it's like, oh, then we're going to do this. Then we're going to get a, the, a, box container we'll send it to mogadishu and then we'll turn that box container into a restaurant and all that that feels like really active and engaged but if you find yourself like thinking about fishing which has never occurred to me yet uh, or golfing <laughs> which has also never occurred to me yet um uh, but to just be uh, aware of that uh that what's going on is that you need your keep your head looking around see mm -hmm. what's going on uh, this is the time of year uh, here in San Diego, we're out in the mountains, the rattlesnakes come out. Right. And, uh, and so I was just, I was walking around, I put the horse away and I was up by the kitchen, like foraging for food. And, uh, <laughs> and I looked under this rock and there's a really big rattlesnake with its head poking out. And uh, he's not there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was really glad to have seen him because that could have really been a problem for somebody else. Uh, and the only reason I saw it is I, I was situationally aware. I was yeah. like, I'm, when I'm walking, I'm like 
look, I'm not afraid of snakes, but I'm just, I don't prefer them, but I just like, I'm situationally aware of what's going on around me. And some people aren't, that would be the hallmark of somebody distracted. They just don't know what's going on around them. And then uh, they don't know what's going on inside of them. And they don't know what's going on because of them uh, in other people's life, all the chaos that they're sowing. So I just want us to be mindful of that uh, and, and encouraged by that to say we have the ability to get a lot of stuff done. If you've ever had a magnifying glass and you focus all that light at one thing, mm -hmm. um, you could really get a lot done. Absolutely. I, I think I can identify that there's some things that I've been distracted by just from listening to you, you know, or the key. So that has um, been incredible wisdom for me today as well. Bob, how can people find more about you and what you do? And also, when's your book coming out? Yeah, you know, they, you can make a horse in nine months, you can make a cow in 10 months, uh, but it takes 13 months to make a book. Is that crazy? <laughs> So yeah, I think it comes out in March of next year. So I'm told. Okay. Um, but once it's like, uh, once I send it in, it's like, it's not my problem. <laughs> it's like, do have your way with it. Um, so I think that's March of next year. And then I, I'm just Bob. Yeah. So I'm a like super easy guy to find. Uh, <laughs> you are, you're wonderful. <laughs> Oh, Bob, uh, thank you for your time, your wisdom, and just sharing a bit that's under the layer. And I just think you're extraordinary and definitely cheering you on. Well, I'm so honored to be with you. And for everybody listening, I just maybe instead of agreeing with some of the neat things, because Lisa's, uh, you know, a teacher of mine, uh, say like, what's something that I can actually do? Like, what am I going to do about what I heard? Mm -hmm. So maybe there was something that was said in the last little bit that just resonated with you. So you say, this is what I'm going to do about it uh, and take agreeing off the table uh, because I disagree with, it's easy to agree. It's harder to just do it. But once you do it, then your heart starts changing. You say like, wow, I'm actually capable of that. Yeah. So thanks, girl. Great to be with you. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for joining me on Brave with Lisa. I hope that it has inspired or impacted you in a small or large way. Feel free to comment, to subscribe and share with some friends. And please join us next week on another conversation we will have here on this channel on Brave with Lisa.